Welcome to my film review of Shazam. So this is a DC superhero movie. Um, so the first thing to say is, if you are a DC fan, um, you're definitely going to go want to go and see this. Why wouldn't you? It's a new character for the DC universe. So just like with the Marvel movies, they've been introducing characters like Black Panther, Captain Marvel, um, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Aquaman. Sorry, no, that's DC. Um, now DC have been introducing a few of their own, which is the likes of Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and now we have Shazam. So this is definitely a movie where I've seen the trailer, and I'm, and I'm pleased to say that the trailer didn't give anything away. Now, I saw the trailer quite a while ago in the cinema, so whether or not they've brought out a more recent trailer that's a little bit more revealing, I hope not. But a lot of what happened in the movie, I completely and utterly wasn't expecting. So that was really pleasing. The, sp the, the movie, the trailer that I'd seen gave, gave nothing away. All the trailer told me was, this is a superhero movie, and it's funny. It's very much based on comedy. Um, and that is very much what it, what it delivered, to be, to be perfectly honest. I was wondering during the movie whether this was going to be an integ integration into the DC universe. Um, but at the end credits, um, you know, the, they, they wanted to make it perfectly clear um, that this is part of, part of the whole DC world. So that isn't a spoiler, because there's no linkages during the movie at all uh, that you need to worry about. But all I, the point I'm trying to get across is, if you're likely to be watching the f any future DC movies, like the Justice League, you know, where they, everyone teams up together, you're going to want to see this movie so that you understand the character Shazam. There's very much, there's a lot to learn about the character. Obviously, it's a completely new character. So basically, if you're a DC fan, no questions asked, you want to go and see this movie. For everybody else who, you know, you may be a, um, a semi-superhero movie fan, you, you, you might not necessarily go to all of them. You might dip in and out, depending on what takes your fancy. So to help you understand whether this movie is for you, I was thinking during the movie of a lot of films that it kind of, it reminded me of as if they'd kind of like integ integrated them all together. And this is basically what I thought it came down to. So if you like any of these movies, there's a very good chance that this is a movie that you'll enjoy. So firstly, um, okay, let's, let's state the obvious, let's say Superman, okay, so... You know what Superman's about. It's a, it's a character with powers, with extra special abilities. Okay, so you can probably tell from, you know, whatever you've seen of this movie that that's exactly what this is about. It's about a superhero guy who has special powers. So if you like Superman, there's a good chance you like this. It also felt a little bit. At one point, it felt a little bit like the Goonies. So you've got your old what was that '90s kind of slapstick, not slapstick, but kind of comedy. Um, if you like The Goonies, then there's there's elements of it of this movie that reminded me of The Goonies, which was nice. Um, you know, I expected this to be a comedy, and it delivered. It had me laughing out loud um, on numerous occasions. The word, the odd bit that maybe wasn't that funny, and the auditorium that I was in wasn't overly packed, and they probably didn't, you know, they didn't scream the place down with laughter. But it certainly got plenty of chuckles. Um, so I think, you know, if at the very least it would put a smile on your face, even if you're the kind of person who doesn't necessarily laugh out loud in public places. Um, so you've got the Goonies, a little bit of the Goonies, a little bit of, obviously, super, Superman. And then also Instant Family. If you saw the movie Instant Family, which has been out very recently, I personally thought that movie was absolutely excellent. I really, really enjoyed that movie. So it's got an element of Instant Family about it as well. So if you liked Instant Family, there's certainly a lot in this movie for you as well. Um, was there a third? I think I think there was another element I was I was considering it. So, so we've got Spider Man. No, I think them three. Them three are kind of the main, the main elements that you're gonna, that I would 
that I would sum up this movie by, by comparison to other movies. So I hope that helps you understand whether it's for you. Now what I thought of this movie, um, let's get to the rating. I feel like an 8 out of 10 might be a smidge too generous, although I did give Captain Marvel I think 8 out of 10, or did I give Captain Marvel 7.9? Um, I'm going to give this about the same. It's not quite an 8 out of 10, but it was good. I'd, I'd probably go around 7.8. So, I enjoyed this movie, but it wasn't the kind of movie where the time flies by from start to finish and you're like, oh my god, has that been, because it's 2 hours and 10 minutes, oh my god, you know, has that been 2 hours and 10 minutes already, that flew by. It wasn't one of those movies. It did feel a little bit draggy at times, which sounds a little bit harsh, but on the whole, I did really enjoy this movie. But it's not, you know, it's not the best action um, movie that I've seen in a while, you know, comic book hero movie. It's definitely not the best I've seen. And I'm quite addicted to them at the moment with the Marvel movies coming out and Avengers and everything. That I'm loving my uh, superhero movies at the moment. And this was worth a watch, but not you know, not absolutely amazing. So, in terms of is it worth going to the cinema to see, I would say if you're a big DC movie fan, the question's already answered. You know you want to go and see this. Definitely go and see it. It's worth watching. It's not you know, it's not terrible. It's, it's good. It's definitely worth a watch at the cinema. But if you're paying £10 per person, I'm I'm struggling to to really say that it's worth it, you know, if, if you can go for a fiver, fiver each or something like that on your special offer days, um, I don't think you'll feel shortchanged at all, but if you if you were to pay £10 for this and you're not a huge hardcore DC movie fan, I think you might feel like you didn't quite get your money's worth, I'd maybe be thinking save it for the Avengers Endgame, you know, and obviously the, uh, the, the double bill is coming out as well, um, in Infinity Wars and uh, end game as a double bill on Wednesday the 24th of October so make sure you get to your local cinema house so that you can uh, go and see the double bill because why wouldn't you want to go and see two amazing Avengers movies at the cinema but anyway I digress this is supposed to be about Shazam so it's probably you know it's not one of those must see if you're paying £10 per person kind of movies I would have to be honest about that um, but it is you know, if you're an avid cinema fan, it's worth going to the cinema to see. And in terms of the special effects, um, there weren't there weren't like your Marvel Studio special effects. It was very much more like your Superman special effects. You know, it didn't feel like there was anything done that couldn't have been done in the cinema 15, 25 years ago, even something like that. You know, you've got you've got very basic CGI stuff, although the movie was great, it wasn't one of those movies where if you don't see it at the cinema it's going to ruin the experience, because I think as long as you've got a reasonable sized TV at home, um, you know, you could probably get just as much of a kick from watching this at home. It's not an absolute must-see at the cinema, I'm going to be honest there, it's not, you know, the CGI wasn't mind-blowing. I'd be interested to know how much to spend on this movie, because I would guess the budget was probably nothing like what they spend on a Marvel movie. Although, like I say, I'm not criticising it, it was still good, but it wasn't absolute blockbuster like what the Marvel movies are pumping out right now. You know, I'm a bit of a Marvel fanboy, I like my DC as well, but, you know, I loved Aquaman, absolutely lo loved Wonder Woman, thought they were both absolutely brilliant, but I would say that Shazam, compared to Wonder Woman and compared to Aquaman, is a very poor effort in comparison. Like, for me, Aquaman was like a 9 out of 10. It was absolutely awesome. Wonder Woman was an awesome 8 out of 10. But this, I feel like giving it 8 out of 10 is being a little bit generous. Giving it 7.5 out of 10 is probably being a little bit harsh, but it's somewhere in that region, you know. So it's not the best, but it's still decent. So by all means, go and see this at the cinema if you're an avid movie fan and you like your DCs. But if you're the average um, casual cinema viewer, um, I would, and you're paying, you know, you don't get to the cinema that often, and when you do, you have to pay £10 or something like that, I would maybe save the experience for the new Avengers movie that comes out in a week. Um, that would be my advice if I'm being brutally honest. And you can always catch this movie when it comes on Netflix or on DVD or whatever. So, um, yeah, worth a watch, but not ultimately 
an absolute must see. So let's just take a quick look at my other um, few points that that we critical points that we consider. Now, was it a popcorn muncher? Now, this was the best audio experience I've had in the cinema for ages. I was on one of the huge screens, you know, the blockbuster size screens. So I, I managed to have a great seat right near the front, dead center, and the audio was loud as anything. Like, I would have maybe turned it down a little bit. So I don't know whether that was just a, a mistake by the movie house, having the audio particularly loud for this movie, but it was great. The louder the better, really, for me. I'd much rather it was too loud than too quiet. And in terms of popcorn muncher, there was loads of noise during this movie. So you're not going to have any problem getting your popcorn eaten during the course of this movie. There'll be the odd quiet spells, but for a lot of this movie, it was flat out noise. I had my usual ice cream and I didn't have any problem scraping the bottom um, and having the noise of the cinema disguise fully the noise of my spoon scraping the ice cream tub. So it would have definitely been fine for popcorn as well. What else do we need to look at? Is there anything at the end? Well, it's DC. You know there's something at the end. I wish the people in the cinema that I was watching it with knew because as usual, as soon as it finished, you have people darting out the cinema and I'm like, what, did you hate the movie? I always have this rant, so I'm not going to go on. You know, I just don't understand. If you watch a Marvel or a DC movie, why in God's name do you leave before seeing the additional credits you know what's a few more minutes is your life really that busy that you know you can't wait another three minutes to see the extra sequence that they put at the end which is giving you a direct link a direct clue as to what's coming in the next movie why wouldn't you want to see that it's crazy i'm a, I'm a hardcore movie fan maybe these people aren't but if they're not why are you paying full price to see the cinema on a saturday it's not like you were on an orange um makeup movies Tuesdays or anything where it was buy one get one free you were paying full price today people and you dart out of the cinema like your seats on fire and you can't wait to get out of there so the credits at the end were 10 minutes long obviously I waited till literally the very 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 end until the screen went blank now the first movie sequence that we see takes three minutes to appear so the credits start to roll you've got loads of great animation like you do on the marvel so you know it's not the end because you're still getting entertainment on screen and that's where you get to see a lot of the um other dc characters you know um being drawn and depicted and everything so you're like oh okay yeah so they you know they are planning on making this you know part of the dc wonder woman Aquaman kind of universe, Batman, Spider, uh, uh, Superman. Um, so you get three minutes basically. So three minutes of this animation, and then you get an end sequence which gives you. It's very important because this is the end sequence that lets you into what might be coming next. So you absolutely, definitely want to see that, and it's only three minutes. It's only it's a two it's a two hour and ten minute movie. The movie ends after two hours. You are, the last ten minutes are credits. You knew it was a two hour and ten minute movie, so why wouldn't you be willing to stay two hours and ten minutes? Um, so the first end sequence is three minutes. Once you see that, it's another it's another five or six minutes, and you get a one final bonus end sequence right at the very 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 end. And this isn't critical. So if you really do desperately need to go, you're not really losing out on any key information. It's more a gag. So at the very end, the very, very end, it's just one last little giggle. Okay, so if you've been enjoying the movie and you want to have one last laugh, please stay till the very end. It'll be another five or six minutes after the first end sequence and you get to have the final piece of humour offered by the movie makers. So there are two at the end, one at three minutes and one at ten minutes. Please hang around, watch them both, enjoy them. They've been put there for your pleasure, so why not take advantage of them and enjoy them? So that's all we really need to cover for this movie review. Um, like I say, I don't like to go into the movie. I don't like to give any details away. I'm just trying to help you understand, is this the kind of movie that you want to see? Is this the kind of movie that's worth going to the cinema for? And for me, I... I enjoyed it. I'm a Cineworld pass holder, just to remind you, so I don't pay for any movie and go to as many as I want for the same fixed fee. If you want to join Cineworld, you know, feel free to um, get yourself a one-month free pass. Um, 
and join with me in the link. But ultimately, I am glad I saw it, but I definitely wouldn't be excited to go and see it again at the cinema because there's other stuff I'd rather watch. But it is, nevertheless, um, one that does intrigue me to watch again because now that I've seen how the movie pans out, I would actually be quite interested to watch it again from the start. But I don't think I'd want to go to the cinema. I think I'd be quite happy just waiting until it comes out on DVD and watching that one at home. So I don't really think there's anything I need to cover about the story other than to emphasise the fact that this is very much a, a comedy based movie. It's a little bit like Spider-Man Homecoming, the 2017 Spider-Man movie. The The character is very young, um, the Spider-Man character is very young and you get all of the schoolyard foibles that comes with being of that age and you can relate to them, you can remember when you were at school and you've got that kind of innocent humour and very likeable characters as well. So that's what this movie offers. So if you liked Spider-Man Homecoming, the 2017 movie, you'll definitely like this, I think. It, it, it's, it's got the same kind of tone. And obviously you'll find out what the situation is with are there any good guys, are there any bad guys. But this movie takes you through the journey of how does the character Shazam come about. And I did find it a little bit slow at first, I'm not going to lie. But once it got going, once the, once the humour kicked in, it was enjoyable. And, it, and, it, and, it, and the movie did kind of fly by after that. But I'd probably say the first half hour, you have to kind of stick with it a little bit. It does. It is a little bit slow, but it's not terrible. It's not boring slow. You're just keen for it to get moving and get to the you know, the, the superhero type stuff. So I hope that's given you a good insight as to whether or not this movie is something you need to go and see. Um, like to cover all your bases and help you make an informed decision before you spend a great deal of money going to the cinema. Um, if indeed you are the kind of person that pays per episode. So I hope that's helped and we will see you on the next review. Thanks for listening.